blisters. They suck, am I right? But for plenty of folks who spend a lot of time on the trail, they're an unavoidable evil. Or so I've been told. I've probably had two blisters over the 10 years, but maybe that's because every inch of my feet are calloused from all the hiking and barefoot sandals. Or maybe it's because I know how to take care of my tootsies. Who knows? Either way, there are ways to treat and, yes, even prevent blisters from forming in the first place. So if you're ignoring hot spots on your heels or toes until you have a giant fluid-filled bubble that's ready to burst, I have bad news for you. You're doing it wrong. Let's do it right, okay? And save not only your feet from having nasty, painful, loose skin torn off and flapping all over the place, but keep you from having to throw away your socks because they're now crusted with blood. <laughs> how many people have I lost already? Eh? Josh, how many people do you think we lost already? Still got a few of you? Still with me? Great, then let's get into it. But first, let's talk about how blisters actually form. That way you know what's happening when you start to feel that hot spot, that irritating rubbing on your ankle or toe, otherwise known as a blister, which forms when an external force like your shoe or even a piece of grit stuck in your sock presses on moving parts like your skin and causes bone and skin to move out of sync. Kind of like this. That force, if given enough time, which is probably less time than you think, results in a tear under the surface of your skin. Your body's not cool with that, so it responds by trying to protect the area by filling the space between it and your outer layer of skin with fluid. That fluid is what forms a full-blown blister. And they hurt like a mother. Fortunately, addressing the hot spots that signal a blister is on the way ASAP can prevent them from turning into full-blown blisters. Which is great because a hot spot is easy to fix. Just slap a piece of moleskin adhesive bandage or my favorite, a little strip of kinesiology or KT tape on there. I like KT tape because it's super sticky, which means it won't fall off even if you hike through a little water and creates a nice protective barrier so no more rubbing. You will want to address those hot spots immediately. As in as soon as you feel discomfort, not at the next snack break, not after the next river crossing, immediately, because it's not getting any better from here. It's only going to get worse. So find the source of the irritation and fix it. Tighten a strap or lace. Remove the dirt stuck in your sock and slap some kinesiology tape on there. If it's too late and you let a full-blown blister form, well, you did it wrong but you still need to treat it. For starters, no matter how tempted you are to start popping or slicing at that bubble, don't. And don't tear or peel away the skin on top of the blister. For crying out loud, do not do that. Here's what to do instead. Now, if you have a baby blister that's just starting to be rubbed raw but isn't yet, you may be able to get away with just covering it with a blister bandage or kinesiology tape. Heck, you can even use duct tape or gaff tape in a pinch. But don't put tape directly over blisters that have already started to bubble or you might do more damage when you peel it off later. I know, gross, right? No, no, for larger blisters, you're basically gonna have to perform minor surgery. Yeah, only slightly kidding. But seriously, do sanitize your hands, the area around the blister, and a safety pin, the latter of which is a handy thing to keep in your first aid kit. The tip of a sharp knife will also do it a pinch, but remember, no slicing. Instead, you want to gently poke a small hole at the bottom of the blister and drain the fluid from it. Then, once the blister is flat, Apply a donut-shaped bandage like moleskin around the blister, the traditional donut shape, you know, with a hole in the middle, and cover it all with a blister bandage or band-aid. Whatever will cover it up and protect it from more rubbing or dirt. The donut-shaped moleskin will help keep your shoe or whatever it is from pressing on the most sensitive area of the blister and causing even more discomfort. If the blister ruptured or tore before you could get to it, <sighs> Well, you really did it wrong. I mean, no judgment, but this one's on you. Because now you're going to have to clean the whole area with water and alcohol, which is going to hurt like the dickens. Then use a big enough moleskin donut bandage to go all the way around the outside of the blister and cover that all with a blister bandage or something like second skin squares or a hydrocolloid bandage. That'll keep the whole area protected and help it heal. If you feel the need to secure everything to your foot further, Finish it by covering it all with kinesiology tape or leuco tape or whatever you have on hand. That'll help keep it all stuck in place no matter what. And there you go. 
blister treatment and prevention so you're not doing it wrong anymore. But a few tips, just as a bonus, especially for those of you who tend to get blisters frequently. One, wear well-fitting synthetic moisture wicking socks to keep your feet dry. Oversized socks can bunch up and cause friction, as can damp cotton socks, so avoid both at all costs. Two, if your toes tend to get blisters, consider wearing toe socks when you hike. I'm a huge fan. Three, and this is a big one especially if you get blisters frequently, make sure your shoes fit properly. They should be snug but not too tight, and definitely not too loose, because that will absolutely cause blisters. And finally, continuously check your shoes and socks for debris and dump out any unwelcome particles that could cause friction and thus blisters. What do I keep for blister care in my first aid kit? Well, usually because I don't get blisters that often, I keep some small strips of specific blister prevention tape from KT, as well as moleskin. And of course I have other things like adhesive bandages in there just in case. Hey, generally that's all I need to protect my feet, but what you need may vary. Either way, there you go. No more treating blisters wrong. Did we just change your life? Do you have other useful solutions? Let us all know in the comments. Then go ahead and subscribe while you're down there and hit that thumbs up. It's actually a really great way to support our channel and doesn't cost a cent. Although you can also support us on Patreon, where members get access to exclusive videos and bloopers and outtakes and all kinds of goodness. But however you support Terror Drift, we're super grateful you're here. So take care of your feet when you hike, wander on.